What's up guys, Larry Chan here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're featuring a very, very nice Honda CRX built by my buddy Kenji from Greddy. Hi again. How are you? Good, good. So this is kind of how crazy I guess I am in terms of trying to get the best car features, the best exclusives. Yesterday I was just at Greddy in Irvine. I was there to shoot another car. I was there to shoot a R33, your first build with Greddy. Yeah. So we walked into the shop and I saw this and I was just so blown away. Honestly, without a doubt, this is the prettiest Honda I've ever seen. Straight up, I, I think this thing is amazing. Thank you, um, thank you. And, and it has quite the story behind it too. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's almost like a, my, you know, pandemic project. I got this car in April of 2020. A friend of a friend, a co-worker of a friend, Gene, was uh, kind of getting rid of it. I guess he inherited it and was parked at in his garage or driveway for like three years and he wanted to kind of, you know, it was his project, but he never really got around to it. And, you know, he needed to kind of make room and, you know, he offered it to my friend Gene and uh, he wasn't really interested in the first gen CRX. He has second gen. And I wasn't really looking into doing anything like this either. But, you know, when I heard about it, like, oh, you know what, that might be a cool project. I've done EFs and I have you know, CRX, the second gen, but first gen will be pretty cool. I have, you know, a good friend of mine, Junior, has a really nice with the full Mugen kit. So I thought, you know what, it could, uh, you know, turn it into something, you know, pretty nice and special as a project and started searching for the parts. And I noticed it's almost impossible to find more than the EF. But as soon as I started posting that I got this car, people from everywhere on Facebook and Instagram just, you know, started messaging me from, you know, Netherlands to Poland to Indonesia, even some in Japan. So I was actually lucky to gather a lot of the parts that I needed. The car was pretty beat up to begin with, but I found the original engine that comes in the, you know, the Japan model and you know with the zz hood so it has this special yeah pump this is this for the is twin special. cam wow yeah so okay. that's a jdm hood uh was only available in japan and also europe right so you know J us never gets the the cool engine even back in the 80s so just sourcing all these parts was pretty pretty uh challenging but at the same time got to meet a lot of great people from honda community to kind of gather these special parts this really has a special place mm. in so many people's hearts. Even just before we started rolling, mm. people are you know riding by and they're like, "Oh, we had that," or yeah. they they even guess the year correct. So mm. this is a 1985 yes. Honda CRX, CRX that was sold in the U.S. Yes, this is a U.S. version. U.S. version, and so it's, a, it's not an SI. SI had the sunroof, which you know I prefer without the sunroof anyways. But um, this was a standard model. So I came with a 1.3 carbureted engine, single cam, but I did the whole engine swap with a uh, 1.6 dual overhead cam ZC. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dig in that, mm -hmm. to that. So in terms of condition, what, how was the paint? How was the chassis? Paint was pretty bad. Um, back then it was a single stage paint job. And the, the most challenging part was this CRX came with ABS plastic front mask and ABS plastic fenders. And it was all in pieces, like cracks and holes everywhere. And you can't buy these anymore. So I had to kind of research how to repair ABS plastic. It's not even like the regular, you know, um, the bumper type material. Um, so it's, it gets really brittle over time. And even if I, after I repaired it, it was still like cracking from different spots so I had to kind of treat it so yeah this was in like three pieces mm -hmm. this front mask was in three pieces as well it had cracks all the way down here crack here and then another crack like over here in the corner so that was the the most challenging part painting is you know pretty easy you just take it to a paint shop and you know get it painted but just prepping the body along just the fenders and the front mask to make it you know to this condition 
that you see today was the most challenging part because it's not something that could be replaced anymore. So how far did you go down to metal with this? Was this a bare chassis? Uh, yeah, we pretty much stripped it, the whole interior, the, the, dropped the motor, and pretty much got it painted outside, not really inside, but um, in the engine compartment as well. So I just wanted clean engine compartment, so. Did you put it on a rotisserie? Uh, no, uh, it was a rolling chassis. Okay, Yeah. okay. So after it got came back, then I took off all the suspension and started, you know, treating the, the subframe and arms and everything. Got, got it powder coated and all that. So, so how close is this to the original paint? It's pretty close. I mean, it's the the original um, paint code for this car for this year. But you know, obviously we put the you know the clear and everything instead of keeping the single stage you know yeah. paint job. So it has a nicer clean shine to it but with that said this is going to look a lot better than potentially it was when it was, it was brand original. new yeah 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 for sure and even this stuff right because this mm -hmm. is you you had to paint this yes. all of the trim pieces yeah. the bottom half of the car yeah so it's a two-tone and this is also we use the original paint code for this mm -hmm. oh okay um is this a u.s bumper uh u.s and japan was the same actually i was able to find a brand new bumper as well so i have two sets this one has the Honda Axis option lip spoiler with the fog lights. And I also have another bumper with OEM lip spoiler. God. So I just recently put this on last weekend. It looks so cool. So the, the crazy thing is you pretty much got it running even just yesterday. Like I it, got it running actually, but uh, probably like a month. Oh no, actually a little bit more than that. But then I noticed there was a leak on the radiator and few things that needed to be, you know, really tweaked to be able to drive out here today. I drove it around yesterday to make sure everything's good, but I took it to Weekfest in San Jose. That was the first time it fired up. That was last year, um, October, I believe. But since then it's been in the garage and I haven't been able to put it on the street yet. So today's pretty much the maiden drive, so to speak. All right, so let's walk around mm -hmm. the car a little more. The, this is pretty, uh, you had to redo all of this stuff. Then, yeah, so to, to usually match. on the Japanese version, they had this DOHC sticker and then had this, you know, program fuel injection. Yeah. But since it's, you know, it's not fuel injected anymore. So I got this Mikuni 44 That's cool. carburetor sticker to make it look like that. Yeah, to but, match, yeah. to match the font. Yeah. yeah. That is super cool. Mm. Yeah, the, well, that, that'll uh, kind of give you a preview mm. of what's in the motor. Yeah. Um, what else did you have to source or what else did you have to or like just the trim trim pieces this was all brittle and cracked so i had to source and you know i was able to find this side was brand new i found but the other side i had to go to the junkyard that's not cracked and pull it and try to restore it so a lot of the time this seam right here is cracked and it's separated as it gets older the plastic just kind of shrinks and it just pulls on it and start cracking this this part is usually cracked as well. I bought three different hatch just to get this off one, this one off another, and just kind of restored it because you can't buy these brand new anymore. Because when you look at something like this, I wouldn't even know what to call this. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of getting to the era where you're restoring a car that's not mostly metal. There's just so much plastic on this exactly. car. And honestly, plastic, while it will exist forever, probably, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't exist in this state yeah. for very long. It starts cracking yeah. and shrinking and um, just, you know, just over time, it just, you know, wears off and just gets corroded. So this was like, a, it's a sheet metal with a plastic coating on it. Oh, okay. So it usually just gets crusty and starts chipping off. So what is this Ballad Sport? Ballad Sport is what they call it in Japan. So it's a Honda Civic Ballad Sport CRX. Oh. Yeah, but they didn't use that name, you know, for US, but I was able to find that emblem on, That's I think that was eBay or maybe Yahoo Auction in Japan. Yeah, yeah. it looks great. So then uh, tell me about the rear end. Did you have to get new tail lights? Or yes, anything? so I was able to find the uh, JDM tail lights as well. The center garden inch is actually US or maybe it could be European spec. I just found the red one, so, but 
yeah, usually these things are all scratched or cracked or, you know, just really worn and just discolored over, you know, over time. But I was able to find that brand new as well. So, you know, my EF was, I called it the super treasure hunt. You know, it became a Hot Wheel super treasure hunt, but to source the parts for, for that car was, you know, a challenge. And, you know, it's this is my version two, you know, of uh, Honda Super Treasure Hunt build. I love the plate too, mm. it's so cool. I was, yeah, I was surprised that nobody had that, but yeah, luckily it was available, so I got that made. So uh, what do you think the MSRP of this car was when it came out in 1985? Wow, pro I don't even know. Could be under 10. Oh, it's gotta be. Yeah. I don't know, but. Six, what, seven, what's uh, what's crazy I is I, no I don't idea. even want to know how much you spend on this. Um, I don't even want to know, but yeah. I I can't imagine. I'm sure it's multiple of times mm. of how much this car yeah. was originally selling for. Mm. Oh, you for know. Sure. And then on top of that, there was one point when you probably could buy this car for five hundred dollars or less. Oh yeah. Right. It yeah. was worthless. Yeah. And, but then now, mm. people like yourself, mm. people like me who can appreciate it all these years later, now this has become a classic because realistically, I always say this in my videos, this car was never meant to be special. Mm. You know, this was just a daily commuter car. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the Honda's you know, sports car at the time. You know, when Senna was still F1 with McLaren, Honda, and you know, there's a video of him test driving this car back then. It was considered like a Japanese sports compact car back then. You know, that's like the next generation after like the Z car. And then in the 80s, this was considered like a Japanese sports car pretty much. So, um, so like what, what about the mud flaps and yeah. stuff? Yeah, brand new. Brand new. Got lucky on that one as well. I think I got that from Poland. Poland. Incredible. Yeah. And some of these parts are reproduced. Um, uh -huh. Kyoto um, makes it, so this is carbon fiber. So usually this thing is ABS plastic as well. Got and it. it just, usually if you see these cars at, you know, the original condition, these things are all broken apart, um, just cracked in multiple pieces. And then so this is missing. carbon? Yeah. This, this is whole carbon. piece? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So the side skirt mm -hmm. is carbon on yep. both sides. Yes, oh. and this door panel as well. Oh, is, okay. Yeah, so that's my great that somebody my, makes it at all. Right, original one was just in pieces, and I couldn't repair that. And uh -huh. just the way it attaches when you start screwing it in, it just is so brittle that it just cracks. So uh -huh. usually, and like, what about this kind of yeah, stuff? Too? Original, oh. and this is a Japanese emblem right here that I found on uh, Yahoo auction. So see, it says has a dash between C, R, and X. Mm -hmm. So Japan model has that dash, but the U.S. one doesn't. That's so it's kind of like the you know the JDM little accents. Yeah. So one of the things that you know I, I haven't glossed over, but I just kind of waiting for mm. us to talk about it because yeah. it's such a centerpiece of this vehicle. Yeah. Um, tell me about these wheels. Yeah, these this... wheels are. This is the Holy Grail, isn't it? So yeah, this is my favorite wheel of all the ones that I have. Well, actually the, the white, white uh, EF has that special SSR with the magnet key, the SSR Neos. That's like the Holy Grail of like the classic wheel from you know the late 80s to the early 90s. But this one here as well is pretty, pretty special and kind of hard to find at, in this size. This is 15 inch and usually most common back then was 13 and 14 inch and I was able to find this and I actually bought this when I was building my EF and when I got my second gen CRX I put it on there but this is more period correct for for this build mm. so it's called the Mugen CF 48 mm -hmm. I see it's uh kind of has that everybody calls it the fan clutch you know thin design yeah but it also come also came with a aero disc that covers the whole thing, but it's almost impossible to find. So I don't have that. Yeah, it's a unique design. I have a couple sets of these actually. So. It's like uh, 
somewhat functional, right? It's a, it acts kind of like a heat sink. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, but, but you know, of it's of era. Yeah. Um, and first gen Integros and first gen CRX usually, you know, they used to run this. So did you have to get these refinished? Yes, or? I did. Okay, yeah. so you you had them redone. Mm -hmm. um, Powder coated it, the center and then polished the lip. Got it. Yeah, got it. And then uh, the center did, cap is uh, like a re reproduction. Interesting. Yeah, can't find like clean original original one of these anymore. Yeah, these were produced like mid eighties. Honestly, fifteen inch looks correct. I feel like on this car. Yeah, back then they were running more fourteen inch. Um, but 15 inch definitely hearts come by and yeah, it looks much better. Yeah, I, I feel. think so. I think it looks great. Yeah. Um, tires fit really good too. Mm. Uh, what did you do about the suspension? So suspension and the brakes, uh, very common for the first gen to use the Integra, first gen Integra disc brakes upgrade and also rear. Uh, so you have to change all the spindle. Um, and the axles, but uh, yeah, just it's a better combination. It's a pretty common upgrade for the first gen Integros. Mm -hmm. I had to go to the junkyard and you know grab the first gen parts, which is also hard to find because rarely those things go into junkyards. But I was able to find some. Hmm. And, and then, did you have to? Uh, or did you uh, put on coilovers? Oh yes, and uh, Tame makes. Uh, um, like a private label set up for the first gen Integras. So it's a, a Tain sus suspension, coilovers for the rear, and the front is torsion bar. Oh. Yeah, so it's just strut wow. and it's just torsion bar. Okay. So to lower it, it just, you know, loosen this nut to kind of loosen the torsion uh, bar. Interesting. To travel. Huh. But you can't lower it too much because you lose on the thread of that bolt and nut. Right. But I was, I was able to lower it pretty good. Oh. But they, they also have stiffer torsion bars if you want to do more like track track driving to right. make it more stiffer. But it's upgraded shocks then? Uh, yes. So okay. it's tank strut in the front and oh. coilovers in the back. Got it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, can we take a look at the engine yeah. bay? This is uh, the centerpiece of this build it is so good looking yeah this engine was a must for this project so it's a first gen Dorbin cam zc so it came in a first gen crx in japan and also in integras as well so in japan it was called zc but when the first gen integras came to the states similar engine a little bit different but it was called B16 A1. So it's kind of like the how all the B series, this is, you know, the technology kind of evolved from this. And even the valve cover, if you're a hardcore F1 fan, the McLaren uh, 44 or 4 4 Honda engine has the similar valve cover. So that's kind of like the, the design that, you know, they went after. And this bump on the hood is just because to clear, of this. To clear this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's for like the 20 timing. Time. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. So the US one was a single cam, so it didn't have this height right here. So it's flat. That is so, so interesting. Yeah. It's such a cool looking mm. thing. It's such yeah. a cool feature. Yeah. That... We call it the, the ZC hump hood. Yeah. yeah. So, so then all of this is original from the hood that you bought, or? Yes. So I just, I painted it, but I had the max, yeah. you know, the, the label. Oh, so cool. So even this has the, you know, the dual of hit cam sticker for the vacuum lining. So. So, so then how much more power or what's the improvement over what this came? I with? haven't dynoed it yet, but my target was about 180 um, or so, but uh, stock, I think it was like 110. Huh. Yeah, that's a lot more. Yeah. So, is this uh, bigger too? Also, the the literage is. It yes, the original is one point three single cam, and now it's one point six. Oh. And then now we also added this carburetor, so it's a Mikuni forty four. And I was lucky enough to find this Mugen manifold to go with it, and I was uh, Taka from Kusha House restored the whole setup for me. 
So it's pretty. He's pretty known in the Datsun world. Mm -hmm. He restores a lot of Mikunis and Weber cams. He takes these beat up, corroded carburetors and then makes them brand new like that. What and, have you done? Uh, have you done anything internals or anything like that? Internals are uh, actually built with a high, high compression. They're not uh, forged pistons, but uh, just a upgraded um, cast high compression pistons. Cams are Mugen cams, adjustable sprocket from cam, uh, Mugen. Oil pan has been upgraded to the, the Group A race engines from back in the day. So it's a cast uh, Mugen oil pan. Oh, wow, yeah. It has I, I see it. Yeah, it has Mugen LSD in the transmission as well. What? Yeah. How did you find that yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, this friend of mine just had one. He had two. He's building one of, one of these as well. Um, I had some parts that he needed for his build, which I had extra of, so we kind of yeah. you know, traded. That but yeah, incredible. You don't come across Mugen LSD for this for sure anymore. And if you do, then it's like, thousands but i mean you being in the industry you know mm. you've been in the industry for so long mm. and you you run gretty uh here in the u.s do you have connections with mugen in japan no you don't not at all like, even king motorsports you... over here in the state side um a lot of my friends knows them but I, I don't know anybody over there i mean are they still building parts are they still making not things? for this model no okay. only for all the new newer generation you know so they don't really reproduce the older parts. So it's, you know, finding parts for this, it's almost, you know, you just got to go hunt or you got to know somebody that might have it. Yeah. I so mean, I mean, through this whole building of my EF and, you know, this car, I've met so many people in the Honda community where, oh, he might have some, or that guy probably had hit him up and, you know, just was able to source a lot of parts from just, you know, just talking to people and meeting people. Talk about an untapped market, though. Like, I feel like if they got back into yes. Hondas, like old school Hondas, yes. I mean, because how often do you have to, you've built so many cars, mm. you've built so many amazing cars over the years that I've featured and that I've just seen. Mm. Like, you haven't built a carbureted car, I'm sure, in a long time. Huh? Yeah. So, since the, e before the EF, I didn't really have my personal project. So, all of a sudden, I have, what, three, four running Hondas mm. and then I have two more like a shell in the Grady parking lot that everybody's telling me to do something about <laughs> yeah. that, you know at Grady but uh, yeah I can't wait to see what you're gonna build next yeah um, let, let's uh is, is there anything else on, in the engine bay that you wanted to talk about yeah I mean oh another rare piece mm -hmm. this blue header mm -hmm. people why, ask me why this is a trust header that they used to make back in the day. And I found this through a friend that I met on Instagram. Um, and I shipped that, had him ship it to Trust and put it in a container. Even the guys at Trust was, you know, freaking out. Like, what is this, Kenji? You know, it's a Trust header from, you know, for the CRX. So, yeah, I was able to put something, you know, Trust Grady on this build. That's the crazy thing to me is, you know, you mentioned that you had so much fun sourcing the parts mm -hmm. for the EF build. Yeah. It's just, I, I can't imagine the man hours just to do that. Yeah. Just to find the parts to put the, together. I mean, because I bet you some of these things you probably didn't even know existed, huh? Yeah, I didn't. And, you know, I think that's the, the, the most, the great part of this build and even the EF was sourcing the parts, but it's the, you know, meeting the people and just going to Honda meets or talking to some of the, you know, guys in the Honda community and just connecting with people and just, you know, building that relationship. And some of the guys that I talk to almost on a daily basis, the guys that I met through and or reconnected because we all started from Hondas and, you know, it's, it's been great and, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just, that's the, the best part of this build was, you know, meeting the... That's incredible. I love that you got an OEM Honda battery, <laughs> like a new one. Yeah. <laughs> um, can we talk about mm -hmm. the interior? Maybe if you can sure. go on that side. Yeah. Oh, there's so many cool things in here. So a lot of the hardcore CRX guys would know more information about some of these parts. You know, like these seats, I got it from uh, this place called 
HMO, again, CRX-X, JDM. It could be European, I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I was lucky enough to find these seats to kind of go along with my the ballot support build. Okay, so these look brand new. Like, yeah. they look like they've never been sat in. Well, it's, it has some wear. Um, it's faded as well. It's more black than, you know, it, it looks almost gray now, but uh -huh. it was black. But but at least it seems like it doesn't really have any rips or anything, yeah. and the bolsters yeah. are very good. And that's usually the, the, you know, the most... So if you notice this pattern, this was passenger side, both of them. Oh. Because the other side, I have another side that was all tore up. Got yeah. it. Okay. So then potentially be, it was one where that yeah. would be here and mm -hmm. then the driver's side will go in. Right. Oh. So okay. this will be, you know, the yeah. pattern will be the opposite. Got it. But, but I mean, because driver's side on in Japan is that side. Yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. So these are two passenger. Yeah. Ones. But I had to swap the pan and the, the you know, the, the uh, latch, swap it to make it work for driver's side and passenger side because mm. it will be opposite and even the seat belt you know the way it mounts because originally this would be on this side if it was a driver how was yeah. the interior how was the condition it was of actually day? clean this is original carpet from the car um, i dyed it black but there's no holes the floor mat is just uh, aftermarket actually mm -hmm. uh, phase two made mm -hmm. for eg but i kind of made it it. and I like this checker pattern it's kind of like the you know the JDM kind of pattern so but rest like the dash the door panels everything's original I was able no rip no tear no it, cracks that is incredible yeah. that there's no cracks in mm -hmm. the dash and also the fact that none of this vinyl yeah. like I know this vinyl I'm even afraid that we're parked in the sun right now. Yeah. I, yeah. The good thing is it's not that hot right now. No, and it's still so, soft and it's not all brittle. So yeah. it's, you know, I'll, you know, keep making sure to condition it and kind of keep it clean as, as much as possible. So what about the wheel? The steering wheel is the Japanese version as well. So you see the, the horn says DOHC. Ah. PG program fuel injection. Fuel injection. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, but then you so you kept the stock gauges. Then. Yeah, so I have the JDM one, but uh, that revs up to seven and a half, I believe. The wiring is different, so I need to kind of figure all that out. And I noticed the speedometer is not working. When I was cruising like 55, I was already reading like 85, so I need to kind of fix that as well. Mm. But, uh, and then what about the transmission? Transmission, so it's original transmission from, actually this one is off the first gen Integra and that put the LSD, but linkage, I needed to shorten it to make sure it works uh, in this chassis. Miki, Miki at Throttle gave me a shift knob, so I, I'm using that to kind of retap it for, for the different thread pitch, but it kind of has that. OEM style it, look, Yeah, so. it matches yeah. the era, mm -hmm. it seems like. Yeah. I have the original one here, but it's kind of, you know, beat up and cracked, so. Right. Yeah, so I'm just using that shift knob. Huh. So, does any of this stuff work, the HVAC? Yeah. The, f the fans work, but I don't have the AC right now. My plan is to put the AC back on, so I kind of have to remake the AC lines and everything. So, can we see what's in the trunk here? Yeah. <clears throat> Just one of these uh, hoodie that I got from these guys, Honda Vintage. Uh, <laughs> when they when they saw this car, you know they they sent me that as a gift. That's so cool. This was a. Uh, one of the SEMA party cushions that they were giving out at the mm -hmm. end of the party at SEMA. Or, uh, but it's just, it, it yeah. is so clean. I just yeah, can't so believe. Even, you know, it's, it has its wear and tear, but mm -hmm. I was able to kind of save it and just, you know, clean it up. The fact that you go oh, go through uh, those extra steps to dye mm -hmm. the carpet, yeah, things like that. Even have a spare. Original spare. Yeah, original, you know, jack and... You know, the, all the tools. 
Right. What an amazing build. Yeah. So cool. Can we go for a drive? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of loud right now. I don't have muffler on there yet, so it's just dumping it's, on the bottom, but. It sounds good. So yeah. Kenji did turn it on for me when we were shooting it earlier, and it sounds so good. Um, it, it, there's no like raspiness or anything. Yeah. It's just pure, that induction sound. Mm. So cool. You wanna turn it on? Yeah. There's some vibration that I need to kind of figure out. But uh, yeah, overall, it drives pretty smooth. You wanna set up GoPros? for a quick rip in this Ballad Sports CRX. That's one of my favorite thing about the JDM version of cars is yeah. the naming, Yeah. right? The, the fact that it's like, it's a Toyota Soar mm -hmm. or a Alteza. Even the CR, second gen CRX is Cyber CRX. Cyber. Third gen Civic is Wonder Civic. Oh my God. Um, I love that. Yeah, Even like the Accord, like they had Inspire and you know, they have different names. Yeah, versus like, yeah, in Japan they have like, what, the Fair Lady, the Sylvia, yeah. whatever. Here we have 300ZX, 240SX. set up before. Uh-huh. So Taka from Kyusha House was you know kind enough to help me tune it in. To me it doesn't have to go fast. I could enjoy just you yeah. know, the drive and the sound of it. Just the pure driving sound. I saw that and that was kind of my inspiration and you know I 
called him up and talked to him at events and yeah. got a lot of information. Yeah, you can turn around. Yeah. He has a red one too, so yeah. I invited him to Grady as well. Wait, is he Barnhart? Was that the one that I featured? Yeah. Okay. The yeah. Red, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That one is so cool. Yeah. He Again, has a carburetor set up as yeah, well. Yeah, not the fastest car, but it doesn't need to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not the fastest car. It's just about the feeling and the fact that I think one of my favorite stories is I think he bought a car just for the spoiler. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then he just sold the car and kept the spoiler. Oh, so crazy. So we're trying to plan like a cruise together. Yeah. With a couple of the first gen and third gen, CRX and third gen Civics. You know, the 80, 85 era Hondas. I love that. You got to take this to JCCS. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this would be so cool to see at JCCS. Just a, a, a period correct build, but with modern technology. So cool. My neighbors probably won't like it, but I'll put a muffler and it'll, it'll be cleaner sound, but I'll be able to still hear the carburetor, so uh, that's the next step for this. So what do you think? Do you like this build better than your uh, EF build? Uh, that's a tough question. Because that one is like all technology. Yeah. And this is like building it old school. Yeah, this is more like, you know, driving around classic car. Yeah. Much, you know? yeah. Versus you wanted to build a modern car with modern power yeah yeah um, got it Kenji, thank you so much. Oh, Every you. time we feature your cars, there's just so much passion and soul and all of that yeah. into the build. And I just love the the great lengths that you go through to acquire all these I'm always honored things. to have you oh, feature my cars. Just so cool. All right, so we're gonna take some more pictures and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.